Uh, what you got there, Mr. Bergman? Oh, I've got I've got a flask that's completely full. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you see it's full. I, well, I'm pretty sure it's full. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's it full of, Mr. Sams? A lot of students think this is an empty flask. No, we don't have a whole lot of empty things around here. It's full of gas. Yes, yeah, so you see, guys, if you look really close in here, really close in here, you'll see gases. Actually, you don't see the gases, but they're there. And these gases are ideal, okay? Um, we're going to learn today about what an ideal gas is, but primarily what's in here is oxygen and nitrogen gas. And here in Woodland Park and really anywhere on the earth, the main gases, they act as an ideal gas. And we're going to learn about what ideal gases are today. We're talking about the ideal gas law today, Mr. Sams. Yeah. I'm, yep. I, I'm ideal. You're ideal. I am. You're ideal. Yes, I'm the ideal specimen of mankind right here. <laughs> Look at that face, boys and girls. You think he's the ideal oh, yes. specimen? Exactly. What do you think, like uh, Brooke Shields or whatever? I mean, uh, what? I mean, <laughs> what decade what? were you born in? Oh, a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, Brooke Shields. don't even know who that is, probably. Probably not. Okay, not Brooke Shields was the girl. So um, I'm trying to think of uh, who was the guy back then. See, I was I had this crush on Brooke Shields when I was a boy. I so, can see that. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, she was the ideal specimen yeah. of a female. They all pale in, in comparison days. to me. Oh my, Mr. Sam's. I think we need to knock you down a little level. All right, let's talk about this thing called the <laughs> ideal gas law. It's actually right. derived from the combined gas law. And so the combined gas law, as you recall from the last podcast, was this P one V one over N one T one equals the same thing with the twos. With the twos, yep. So, so what we do is we just rearrange it. Right. Now, all the previous gas laws, we've been talking about a change in conditions. You Correct. have an initial something and then a final something. So yes. let's assume we have a gas that's at STP. Okay. And so we'll STP, what's that mean? Standard temperature and pressure. Okay. And we have one mole of that gas. So we'll plug that data all into right. our ideal gas law. Okay, so, so copy this down, guys. Basically what I did is um, I plugged in for the pressure, one atmosphere. Because that's standard pressure. Okay, and then kind of tricky here, there's 22.4 liters in a mole. Right, and we've learned that. We've done lots of stoichiometry yeah. with that. That's how many liters per mole of a gas at STP. So we're yeah. just going to plug STP conditions as well as the number of moles and, and number of liters right. into, so, our, into the combined gas law. And if you take this number right here, um, 1 divided by times 22.4, divided by 273, divided by 1, mm -hmm. you get a kind of a famous number we're yep. going to say here. Point. So what you get here is you get 0 0.0821. Now that's some funky units it's got there. Well, I know it's kind of weird. It's liter because of the volume. Okay. And then atmosphere because we used atmospheres over here. Yeah. And then we had moles, of course, and then we have Kelvin. So liter atmospheres over mole Kelvin. That's the units for it. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that is. So I rearranged this equation. I can then say PV equals NRT. Where now, do you get R? Well, That's R is actually name. this number right here. This is a famous number. Sometimes scientists give numbers letters, and they're famous numbers. Okay, so f whenever we see R, we're going to put 0 0.0821 if our pressure is in atmospheres. Right, and so what you really need to do when you do problems of this variety is convert your pressure into atmospheres, atmospheres yeah. and your volume into liters, and your temperature into Kelvin. Kelvin. Always think Kelvin. Kelvin. Always. Always. Kelvin. Always Kelvin. All right. So hey, let's do an example. All right, let's do it. So we've got our scuba diver here. I, in fact, I picked the scuba diver as the background because that's pretty cool. But let's say the scuba diver. Here's the story. Here's containers filled with 0.25 moles of oxygen gas. We have 0.25 moles of oxygen gas, with a volume of this many liters. We want to figure out what is the pressure of the gas in his scuba tank. So let's do that. Okay. Well, I've kind of cleaned the screen a little bit here just so we can kind of figure this out a little easier. Our uh, calculator has feet again. Yeah, our calculator has feet because guess there, what do you have there? You have Mr. Molman. Okay. All right, so we have container filled with 0.2. Actually, here's our oxygen gas. So let's kind of put our conditions here. And so we have 0.25 moles. So I'm going to say N is 0 0.25. What else do we see there, Mr. Uh, we got a volume. V. Okay, 2. what's that? 2.35 liters. We're just getting that, guys, from the uh, uh, the text and up here. temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. Now, Celsius doesn't work very good. No. Soon, that's all right. And then P equals? Question mark. See, we're trying to find that. So we'll put and a question mark. R. R. Well, let's go ahead and write that. That's 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere over mole Kelvin. Now, we're just going to use the ideal gas law. Plug lesson, and chug. Which is PV equals NRT. Now, we're solving for P. Now, you can kind of rearrange it if you'd like at first, but I, I think it's just easier just to plug it straight in. So I want to say P, because that's what I don't, I don't know P, times nope. V. What's V? 2.35 liters. Uh, 2.35 liters is equal to N. There's my N. 
0 0.25 moles. I'm going to run out of space, aren't I? Times R. Always move the calculator. Yeah, actually, I think I will. I'll move the calculator down here for a moment. Times uh, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times my temperature. Now, a little tricky thing on the temperature. Mm. The temperature needs to be added 273 because mm -hmm. you must always... Oh, it's put it in Kelvin. Kelvin, man. All right, let's put the calculator over here. Well, that was kind of weird. 318. So when you add those up, you get uh, 318. So I'll say 318. Now, when you divide both sides to get P, right? Now, you guys, you algebra people, what do you do? You divide both sides by 2.35. So if I divide by 2.35, the 2.35 cancels here. So now on my calculator, I have 0.25 times 0 0.0821 times 318. I forgot my units. Mr. Bergman, you're naked. Mm. Okay, and this would be in uh, liters. Uh, divided by 2, uh-oh, backspace. How did I backspace? 2.35. Bingo. I get the answer. So the pressure is 2.78. So what would the units on that be, Mr. Well, let's cancel them out up, up in the top. All right, so the liters cancel here and here. We've got moles here and here. That cancels. And my Kelvin is here, and that cancels. That and That leaves us with atmospheres. Atmospheres, yeah. There it is. And that's because if, you, if you're using this equation, typically pressure will be in atmospheres. I think we